Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to our notes video on volume of solids of revolution. Sounds familiar, we've been working on this, but today we're gonna spin uh, areas around lines other than the X or Y axis. So up until now, we've just been spinning around or revolving around the X or Y axis and then using either disks or washers to find our volume. Well, we're gonna stick with disks and washers, but we're gonna spin around other types of lines, both horizontal and vertical. So I've got three examples today, and we're just gonna start right in with our first example. So it says, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by y equals root x, y equals zero, and x equals four, about the vertical line x equals five. So this is the new part. Everything else should look very familiar. This right here is the new part. So we'll deal with that in a second. Let's start like we always do, just by graphing our region. So if I graph, I'm gonna grab my ruler here just in case I need it. If I graph y equals root x, well, I know what that looks like by now. We've graphed that a bunch of times. I know I have 0, 0, and the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So as long as I just go here with what I can do, I have that. And then y equals 0 is just the horizontal line placed over top of the x-axis. So I'll just kind of darken that. And then x equals 4 is the vertical line at x equals 4. So it looks to me as if this is the region that's bounded between those three items. So I'm just going to kind of highlight this. And I'm spinning this around the vertical line x equals 5. So I'm going to draw that in, and I'm going to change the color here. X equals 5 is right here. This is what we're revolving around. So let's try to do that. Now, I didn't give you a lot of room over here. I didn't extend the x-axis, but we can, we can deal with that. So if I kind of mimic... Uh, this and reflect it across the vertical line, I'm going to get something looking like this. And then I'm going to have four units here. Go this way, maybe about yay far. I'm just, I'm eyeballing this like this. I might have made that a little bit too long, but I think you get the idea here. Okay, so if you can envision what this would look like spinning around and becoming three-dimensional, you can see a couple things going on here. The first thing I want you to notice is that when we spin around the vertical line x equals 5, this is mimicking the y-axis. Okay, see that mimicking? So when we do our volume, I just want to make a note that everything about volume will be in terms of y, just like it is when we spin around the y. The other thing I wanna make note of is that there is definitely gap between the line we're spinning around and the shaded area that we began with. Because there's gap, we're gonna be using washers for our volume. So as I set the template, if I'm using washers, I'm gonna put my pie in the front like I always do, and I'm spinning around something that's like the y-axis, then my bounds have to be y values. So if you look at the yellow shaded region, it's bounded from zero to two on the y-axis. And then last but not least, because I'm doing washers, I know I'm gonna have a big R squared minus a little r squared dy. And these will both have to be in terms of y. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. The big r and the little r, the outer and the inner. 
the function that's furthest away from the axis of revolution and the function that is closest to the axis of revolution. So let's take a look. So if you look at the axis of revolution, I'm going to put a dot right on it here in purple so it kind of stands out. Now, the big R, remember this is capital R, the outer radius. So when you measure from the axis of revolution, now you're always measuring into the original shaded area. Don't worry about this over here. You want to focus your measurements over here. When you're measuring from the axis of revolution, you want to measure out, 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 out until you can't go anymore. That is the outer or big radius. But here's the problem. We do not measure things in math from right to left. Like this measurement on a Cartesian coordinate plane like means nothing. We're used to measuring horizontal distances on a Cartesian coordinate system from the y-axis to the right or to the left in some cases. But this is sort of our starting point, the y-axis. So here's how you have to think of this. Get ready. Think of it as this distance right here, which is what we seek, could be thought of as this whole distance minus this little distance right here would give you the leftover. Let me say that again. If you take this whole distance minus this distance, you've got what's left over. So this whole distance from the green line back to the y-axis is five units long. So I'm going to put a five here minus this distance measured from the y-axis to this function. This is an x value, okay? And this x value is nothing more than this function solved for x in terms of y. So if I solve this, I'm going to get x equals y squared when I square both sides. So that is what I'm going to put here. And no matter where I go along this function, the distance from the axis of revolution out is always going to be a total of five units minus the function. Five, even if you're low, five units minus the function will give you the outer radius. Now the inner radius, you'll be glad to know, is much easier. The inner radius, or the little r, is the distance from the axis of revolution to the closer function, and that's just this guy right here. So the distance from here to there is just one unit because it's consistently four throughout. So it's always gonna be one unit no matter where you go. So I can just put a one there. And that is my setup. Now, when I throw that into the calculator, I get, I'm going to put this here, you see that? I'll start with my pi, oh, can hardly see that, let's try this. And then math 9, if we're using the TI, from 0 to 2, and then I'll open a parentheses, 5 minus x squared, squared, minus 1 squared, dy but we know we use X's when we type. I'm getting 87.127. 87.127 units cubed. Final answer. So it's a little bit different, takes some getting used to. That's why I have two more examples for us. So let's push down to example two. All right, example two says, find the volume of the solid generated when the region enclosed by the x-axis, the line x equals 3, and the curve y equals root x, so all this sounds familiar, here's the new part, is rotated about the line y equals 4. That's the new part. So let's get this thing graphed. So the x-axis, okay, that's simple enough, that's right here. The line x equals 3 is going to be vertical at 3, 
So I need to figure out where root x meets x equals 3. So when x does equal 3, the square root of 3 is like 1.7. So I'm at 3 and 1.7-ish here. And I know 1, 1. So this is just kind of wrapping here. That's y equals root x. Here's x equals 3. And here's the x-axis. So this is the region that I am revolving. I'm going to highlight this region. And I am revolving it about the horizontal line, y equals 4. So come up here. Now the first thing I want to notice is that the line that I'm spinning around here is mimicking the x-axis. It's running parallel. So everything that I do for this volume will be in terms of x. So I could draw the other part here. I mean, it's going to spin out and around, out and around, but I don't have a lot of room up here. And since I need only focus my energies on the original shaded part to find my outer and inner radius anyway, um, I don't really need that. So I'm just going to go ahead and get set up. So my volume, again, pi, definite integral. Uh, washers for sure, because there's definitely gap between this region and the axis we're spinning around. My x's are 0 to 3. And then I need my big radius squared minus little radius squared dx. So all in terms of x. So let's measure. So I have to measure from axis of revolution to the function or the, the function which represents the farthest, the farthest uh, distance from the axis of revolution into the shaded area. So if you think about it, we go all the way to there. If we're here, we go all the way to there. If we go here, we go all the way to there. So the outer radius is right here. And that measurement is four, because we're up at four right here. So it looks like outer radius is four. Inner radius, okay, inner radius is from here to right here, this function, or here to there, or here to there. See how the inner radius is dependent upon this right here, the function y equals root x? The problem is we don't measure from here down on a coordinate plane. We measure from the x-axis up like this. So to find this distance, we're going to have to take the full distance from here to here and subtract this y value or this y value or this y value to get what's left over. So the full distance is 4, but then I have to subtract the y value, which is dependent upon, where am I, root x. And that is my setup. So when I plug that into the TI-84, I get pi, math 9, 0 to 3, uh, parentheses 4 squared, minus parentheses 4 minus root x squared dx. And I am getting 72.925. 72.925 units cubed. Okie dokie. Okay, last one, example three, last one on the note sheet, and then we'll do some practice. It says, find the volume of the solid generated when the region enclosed by, and here it is, we've got the y-axis, the line y equals two, and the curve y equals root x, and we're revolving it about, here's the new part, the vertical line x equals negative two. So let's get started graphing. Y-axis, simple. The line y equals two, horizontal, simple. And where does that meet root x? Well, I can look ahead and see that it's going to look like this. Here's y equals 2. Here's the y-axis. 
And then here's the curve, root x. So we are looking at highlighting this right here. And we're spinning it around a vertical line, x equals negative 2, which sits back here. Now, the axis we're spinning around, or the line we're spinning around, mimics the y-axis. So setting up my washers, I already know this much. I know 0 to 2 because I need my y-values that bound the shaded region. I also know it is a washer because of the gap. So here's my big R squared minus little r squared dy. So now it's just a matter of getting the outer radius minus the inner radius measured from the axis of revolution. So we're getting better at this. Let's start measuring. So we've got, here's the axis of revolution, which is always where we start. And we've got to go clear out to the outside. Now, this is interesting because to get from here to here, that's just two units regardless of where you are. Like if you're down here, you still have to go two units just to get to the y-axis. Once you make it to the y-axis, now you have to measure from the y-axis to the function, which is just an x value. This x value is dependent upon this function. So if I solve for x in terms of y, each x value coming this way is equal to y squared. So my outer radius, I'm going to write as the constant 2 plus the x value of y squared. Now the inner radius, well, that's measured again from the axis of revolution to the inner function, which is this guy, and that is just the constant 2. That's it. So we put that into the calculator, and we get pi math 9, 0 to 2, parentheses, 2 plus x squared, all squared, minus 2 squared, and I'm getting 53.617, 53.617. Six one seven units cubed. And I'm, I'm not doing a very good job on this worksheet of mimicking it on the other side. If I would do that, let's see, where would I be? I have room here. So I'm two away, so it'd be like here. And then I'd have to go four units this way. One, two, three, four. And then kind of come like that. So you're looking at... I'm trying to get an idea of what this would look like in 3D. I'm not sure. Can you think of anything? What that look like? You can stew on that for a little bit. But that would be maybe a better, a better picture. This one I just didn't do because I, it would have run up into my problem. All right. Well, that's that. And we'll practice it now. And thanks for watching.